garden. Oh, now, our that. planting season for most vegetables is September and October. The summer is too hot to grow almost anything down here but okra. Even the herbs like basil and cilantro are in the fall. It's just too hot in the summer. I know like New Jersey, you plant everything in the spring. It's all different down here. We're going to start off with the bananas. Now, all of these plants that you're going to see are bananas. They're not plantains. Each one of these stalks produces fruit only one time. After we harvest the fruit, we wait for it to send a new shoot at the base of the plant, which you can see here on the right. Then we go through and cut down the mature ones that have already fruited, so all the nutrients will go to the new growth. The bananas you get at the grocery store, Chiquita and Dole, are usually the Cavendish variety. I want you to look at the fourth row on your left. Look up. These are the praying hands. It looks like two hands cupped together in prayer. You can see them right here. Now, bananas used to have seeds in them. Really hard seeds like BBs. But through hybriding now, all you see is a little speck inside. The praying hands. We're in Miami-Dade County Park. We don't sell any plants or trees or fruit here, except during festivals when we have vendors come in. We got all of our um, bananas from a local nursery called Going Bananas. Around the corner there, um, we put together a little retail nursery list. If anybody's interested in buying trees or plants after the tour, ask us for a nursery list in the store. July 15th, they're going to do a banana workshop here. It's $25 for the class, and after the class, you're going to come out here and dig up one of the banana plants. So it's pretty cool. We got them all from Going Bananas. So That's who's putting on the workshop, Don and Katie Chapin. We have over 60 varieties of bananas here. When we come out of the bananas, I want everybody to look up at the coconut palm trees. This is what your coconuts look like in their natural form. What you get at the grocery store, that brown hairy part has had the husk removed. I know all the Floridians know what coconuts look like, but if you're from Switzerland or Minnesota, you might have never. Now, the shrubs on the right and left are from Brazil. These are called the best. When they fruit, the fruit grows right on the bark. The bark will be covered with hundreds of dark purple fruits. They look like grapes. This plant on my left is a member of the philodendron family. It's used in landscaping everywhere. It's called Monstera deliciosa. It has an inner root that starts out as the center of a beautiful white flower. When the flower falls off, it takes about 18 months for it to fully ripen where it's safe to eat. If you taste the Monstera, Mon Monstera fruit before it's ripe, it will burn you like fiberglass. It's perfectly safe to eat when it's ripe, and it tastes like pineapple and banana. Now, right about where the tractor is here, when I pull up and everybody can see, look through here. You're going to see some fruits that are about the shape of a cucumber there. That's what the fruit looks like. You'd be surprised how many local people come in when we serve that and say they had no idea you could eat that fruit. You can recognize the monstera by the holes in the leaves. That's the philodendron that has the edible fruit. Between a pineapple and a banana. There's a native tree on my left called lignum vitae, native to Florida and South America. This is a very dense, coarse, heavy wood that doesn't float. They used to make ship propellers and ball bearings out of the lignum vitae wood. Now off to the left, there's some avocado trees that survived Hurricane Andrew, so we left them here. We've got a lot more avocados farther on the tour. The rock that you see on the right and left is not coral rock. This is actually limestone or oolite. Coral rock starts in the Keys. Years ago, they used to use dynamite when they planted trees. They frown on that now. You get a tractor with a big auger to make your holes. <laughs> so they can get deeper. That's how they made the lake of their house with dynamite. There's a tree on the right at the top of the rock, the jackfruit tree. Look at the size of the jackfruits there. We got a 59 pound and a 51 pound jackfruit off there last time it fruited. This tree on my left is a French peanut. It's in the same family as Guyana chestnut and it does the same thing. It pops open naturally, but it has nuts inside that are small and they are good to eat fresh. This greenhouse that we're going through now is 
is our tropical American greenhouse. Left tree on the left, see the cacao pod there, that's where chocolate comes from. Oh, chocolate? When it turns yellow, then it will be right. Fruit flies. Fruit flies will burrow in and cause worms. Now, papayas have a 
natural enemy that's a wasp. But if you get a papaya with little pinholes in it, you're probably going to have worms in it. And they bag the fruit on those as well. Now they've developed a seedless papaya. The upside is you get no worms, the downside is you have no seeds to replant, but no worms. This next tree on the right is native to Florida. So far, native to Florida is the sea grape, this one, lignum vitae, and I think cocoa plum. That's about it. Everything else here that you're going to see is tropical American country. Sea grape. Years ago, they used to take these leaves because they're so thick, they would dry them out, write messages on them, and make playing cards out of them. Now, we're in Spice Park. The tree on the left-hand side that looks like it has no bark on it is the allspice tree. I'll pull up where everybody can see it. Spice was a combination of cinnamon and cloves, but it's not. There's actually an allspice tree. We also have a lemon allspice. But the trees back there that have the fuzzy pods on top are Bixa. We call them the lipstick trees. They used to use them to make natural lipsticks. But it's packaged as a natto or achiote. It's the natural food coloring for margarines and cheeses. If you look on your orange cheese in the ingredients, you'll see a natto. The large tree off to the left is Mayan spinach, M-A-Y-A-N. It's also called chaya, C-H-A-Y-A. -A. Oh, yeah, this is very nutritional, but it's actually poisonous until you cook it. You have to cook it and triple rinse it before you eat it. I always wonder how many people did it take to figure that out before they realized that. Now behind the Mayan spinach is a large shrub or bush. That's the henna. Henna is where your hair color, the color rinses and tattoos come from. The henna. Now you've got more bananas here on the left, but the tree is the cashew tree. This is where cashew nuts come from. It's the only fruit I know of besides the strawberry where the seed grows on the outside of the fruit. You have a cashew apple and one cashew nut at the end. So if that tree has 300 cashew apples, you're going to get 300 cashew nuts. That's why they're so expensive. Now the cashew apple can be eaten fresh or raw. The cashew nut itself has a very caustic oil like poison ivy inside it. If you've bought raw cashews, they've actually been steamed. It doesn't mean they're roasted or cooked. But the only people who truly handle raw cashews are those that work in the factory. As I turn the corner to the left here, the bananas right on the edge are ornamental. They don't produce a fruit, they have very slender stalks, and the little pink flower goes straight up. Now, the trees on the left, and we had seen some back there as well. These are hot plums. In Spanish, they're called six. There's a picture of them there. These trees go dormant in January and February when there's no fruit and no leaves. You can break a branch off, stick it in a pot, grow another tree. You don't need a seed or a cutting. I want to try this. That's true of our native gumbo limbo, the ornamental frangipani, and the horseradish or moringa tree. The thing that's unique about the hog plum, the first thing that comes back are the plums. It'll look like a dead tree with green plums all over it. Then the leaves come and the process starts all over again. The trees on the right are ice cream beans or inga. This particular variety looks like a large peanut when it's ripe. When they fall to the ground, when you crack them open, cool on the inside. You just eat it as a snack. You eat the white cottony material off the seed. You look closely right where this tractor is right now. You can see what the fruit looks like here. It's all they hide throughout there. These aren't ripe. They have puff out like a peanut, but that's what they look like. If you want a fast-growing shade tree to grow from seed, this is the way to go. These trees are only about nine years old. Look how big they are. Wow. Now, the cacao trees that you saw in house and coffee trees don't do well in the full sun, so sometimes we'll plant the ice cream beans because they grow so quickly to provide shade for them. We're actually going to do a chocolate garden here underneath these, so you have to come back for that. Oh, wow. Even you folks from Utah will have to come back for that. <laughs> Off to the left, these trees are all in the same family. These are in the Anona family. You have sugar apple, custard apple, atimoya, chetimoya, soursop, or guanabana. Rolinia, Kawish, Imama, 
Some of you have heard of these. Others have never heard of them, right? There's pictures of them all here. Something deep. They will make you sick. It doesn't hurt to put them in your mouth and spit them out like you would a watermelon. Deep, but you don't want to chew them up and swallow them. The tree behind the sign is Rolinia. You'll see a picture of it when I pull the tram up. If you plant seeds from the Rolinia fruit, in two years you have a tree with fruit, which is very unusual for a fruit tree to grow and bear fruit so quickly. The vine on the right-hand side is passion fruit. These pineapples are really covered with an invasive awesome possum grape, but those are variegated ornamental pineapples. If you look at the sign, it makes a beautiful red pineapple, but it's not edible. Off to the right is our citrus collection. We had lost all of our citrus trees to the canker disease. They lifted the band, said we could replant citrus. We bought 70 trees. We actually had a nine lemon. It made a lemon the size of a basketball. It was incredible. But there's another disease called citrus greening. You might have heard about this. It's a bacteria that's transmitted by an insect. It burrows all the way to the root and kills the tree. It's in Africa, Asia, and the United States, and they don't have a cure for it. What we have in day citrus is what people have for their own consumption. The big groves are up in the middle of the state, like Frost Proof and Zephyr Hills. You've already probably noticed that citrus is very expensive right now, and juices and everything, that's because of citrus greening. What looks like grass out there is sugar cane. And the pots to the left of that, those black pots is Miracle Fruit. Have you all heard of Miracle Fruit? Miracle Fruit is a little red berry. It's a little big, bigger than a raisin. You put it in your mouth, gently break it open, try not to chew up the seed, get it all around your taste buds for about a minute. Then you swallow everything but the seed. And you can eat a lemon or lime and it will be sweet. Fun if you don't need it. But if you know someone on medications, especially chemotherapy, chemo causes a metal taste in your mouth. A lot of medi medicines do. Miracle Fruit will get rid of that. It's amazing and awesome. What's in Miracle Fruit is miraculous. That's how it got its name, Miracle Fruit. But yes, it is a miracle. We've also had over 26 people come through the park over the past 10 years that have completely lost their taste to some kind of an accident or surgery. Sometimes when they intubate you, you lose your taste temporarily. Sometimes it's permanent. Miracle Fruit receives their taste. It's temporary. It lasts 30 minutes to an hour, but that's long enough to eat a meal. The first time it happened, I had a lady, I could tell she'd had an accident of some kind, and I gave her a natal plum. I didn't have anything sour. A miracle fruit and told her to taste it again. She started crying. When I said, what's wrong? She said, oh, I can taste this. And she had two little boys with her. I'll never forget. They said, you don't understand. My mom hasn't tasted food in years since her accident. So I gave them the seeds and told them how to plant them. But she was a tourist. I never saw her again. Then it was about a year later, one of our neighbors came in that I didn't know had had a really bad accident. Anyway, he said, I haven't tasted food in two years. Everything tastes like cardboard. I knew he had miracle fruit, so I said, do you like mango? He said, I'm from Cuba, meaning, of course I like mango. He literally went to the front of the store by that stained glass window and started sobbing and crying and just kept saying, please forgive me. I feel like a child tasting food for the first time. <laughs> so if you know anybody in your travels, that has lost their taste or they're suffering with medications, especially chemo, be sure and tell them about Miracle Fruit. You can grow Miracle Fruit anywhere in a pot. You have to bring it in and out if you live someplace where it's cold. We leave ours in pots because they like acidic soil, and we're on limestone or oolite, which is very alkaline, so we don't put them in the ground here. But there's a website called MiracleFruitFarm.com where you can order the berries, you can order the plant, they ship them all over the place for you. Miracle Fruit's originally from Africa. That's where we're headed now. So it's going to get a little bit hotter. It's supposed to last. <laughs> we, have, we have red lime, key lime, kaffir lime, calamondin, um, kumquat. We've got some, some tangerine, tangelos, pomelo. All citrus is originally from Asia. So, oh, calamondin's another one. We have really good key lime pie in the cafe. If you get key lime pie, it should be yellow, not green. If it's a green key lime pie, they put food coloring or use a different lime. Now, the trees coming up on the right are citrus relatives, and they're also affected by green. This first tree is the Redland variety 
of white sapote. The area that we live in here is called Redland because the soil is a very rich farmland and has a red color to it. There's a specific area that is called Redland right here in Homestead. That second tree on your right is Wampi. W-A-M-P-I. That's an Asian fruit. It's very tart. The next two trees, the one in front is a Nigerian powder flask and the one behind it is Bale. These you have to crack open with a hammer when they turn brown and eat the pulp and seeds on the inside. The last one is another variety of the white sapote. As we enter Africa, what's growing on the streamers on the left are the African sausage trees. Those are not edible. They, there is um, someone who always makes something or does something with everything. and They do make up uh, out of those in, in a certain country. Right and left are African oil palms. They produce an oily palm nut that's pressed for cooking oils and soap. If you look on dial soap, you'll see palm kernel or palm oil from these trees. Our lake is man-made. As you're exploring, you might come across a couple great big iguanas. That's Fred and Ed. They live here. They look like small dinosaurs. Right about now, you're going to smell mothballs. Everybody smell mothballs? That's the Bangar nut tree back here. It's a little red flower. It fruits twice a year. The fruit starts out green, it turns beautiful red, and it opens up into a heart. This year on Valentine's Day, the hearts dropped all over the ground, and I was walking up and down the tram with them. This year, they didn't drop. The seeds inside the Bangar nut are poisonous, but once you remove the seeds, you have a beautiful ornament. So, The other poisonous one on the left is Aki, the fruit of Jamaica. Right here, this is a fruit that has to ripen and open on its own before it does. It's very poisonous. If one of the ackee fruits falls to the ground before it opens and it dries up, it's still poisonous. So, this is why we tell you in the park you're welcome to eat what's on the ground as long as you know what it is. Sometimes they're clearly marked poisonous fruit, but people pick up fruit and walk around. They're going to bring it in and then they drop it someplace else. So, they're not always under the right tree. Right here is the action. Right there. None of those have popped open yet. The palms on the right and left are gingerbread palms. These are a famine fruit. They're not poisonous, but they um, they look like gingerbread, but they don't taste like gingerbread. The large tree on the right are the famous baobab trees. If you saw the movie The Lion King, these are the tree of life. Look up at the flowers up there, how they open up. There's one here, too. Now, the trunks of these trees will store water and swell. In Africa, the elephants can actually take their tusks and put a hole to get the water out. If the wound isn't too invasive, the bark will heal itself. They don't get much taller than that, but they get much bigger around. Some people hollow them out and make storage or shelter. That tree is about 33 years old, and the other ones are a little bit younger. They all survived Hurricane Andrew. Here, we're still in Africa. Have any of you heard of the Moringa tree? The common name is horseradish tree or drumstick tree. It's originally from India and Africa. It's going to be the tree coming up on the left. I'm going to stop here. You can stretch your legs, and we're going to taste the leaves on this tree. The leaves have 18 of the 23 amino acids, eight essential ones, which makes it a complete protein like meat. The leaves are full of iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and vitamin C. They call it the malnutrition tree in countries where they have no vitamins. The tree produces an oil of bed, which is used to oil machinery and clocks, but it's also used as a cooking oil that doesn't go rancid. The drumsticks, when they're young and green, can be cooked as a vegetable. When they're mature, they take the dried seed pods and grind them up and use them to purify river water to make it potable for drinking, almost as effectively as chlorine. Um, it acts as an alum as you filter the water through it. What is the water? If you were going to make this a regular part of your diet, now this is not an herb, this is a food. They say it will lower your blood pressure and cholesterol. If you have arthritis, it's good for inflammation. But uh, about nine, nine or ten years ago, I was working in the store, and this guy came in and asked me if we had the horseradish tree, which is the common name. 
When I said yes, he couldn't wait to show me his driver's license. He was bald. Takes off his hat and he has a full head of hair. And he said, I've been eating the horseradish tree. And all I could say was, oh, I hadn't been here long enough. I didn't, I wish I knew then what I know now. I'd give a lot of questions. Because all of the literature coming out on the moringa tree says it stimulates hair growth. I don't know if he had alopecia or whether it was a vitamin deficiency. He wasn't here to sell me anything. He really just came in to show me his hair. <laughs> I'd love for him to come back now. I've been asking him a lot of questions, you know. But um, this is another tree. You can break a branch off, stick it in a pot, and grow a tree. You don't need a seed or a cutting. Uh, it also grows really quickly from seeds. And we have moringa seeds if anyone wants them. After the tour, Joanne just pulled a bunch of drumsticks, and they're free if you want to grow your own tree. You can dry and powder the leaves, and they don't lose their nutritional value like other things when they tell you to eat them fresh and green. You can put the green leaves in your salad. I dry the leaves, and I put them in my coffee grinder and make the powder. That's what they're selling online that's so expensive, and I think if you can grow your own, you should. And you should try to always get your vitamins from food and not supplements. We already had the test. We saw Moringa growing here, right? Yeah. tried to grow them. Yeah. I mean, I... Well, you've got to have a really big pot. Yeah. Uh, no, they ever put them in the ground in Minnesota, they're subtropical. In a pot. It would have to be a really big pot, because all you need is um, the leaves. Now, this tree is way too tall. It's a very soft wood. I could take my hand and break any of these branches real easily. You should keep them short. When you call drumstick pipes, so you can easily harvest your drumsticks. Now, stick to it. Everybody goes, oh, I could eat that. Yeah, I try to eat a lot of it. <laughs> I put mine in a neutral yeah, with an apple.